and I can make more content for you towards the internet. And we're rolling. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you rolled on that. <laughs> Greetings everyone, welcome to not my shop, we're in my shop, we're in Frank's shop, I'm down in LA again, like, that's not in Frank, is it? Uh, no, okay, <laughs> <laughs> no, we're in, we have a very limited window, yeah, we have exactly just, this just angle, this amount of space, everything else can't be seen, yeah, but trust it's not me, not even tested projects, no, it's, it's not, other real world client projects, but it is really cool, um, I'm here. I was here for DesignerCon. We just yeah. did that. That was really fun. There yep. will be some tested videos for that. Probably by now you may have even seen it. Could be. Uh, but I'm in Frank's shop and we're farting around and he wanted to show me some cool stuff for this machine behind me. Well, Bill wanted to know how to use this cool machine behind him. Um, as a disclaimer, I am not a trained machinist. No. I am just a dummy that happened to learn from other dummies in the special effects industry um, how to perform basic functions on a machine. I've gotten the chance to machine cool parts for movies um, in the past. Like I, I made. Remember in uh, that movie, uh, Scary Movie Two, the dude with the little finger. Okay. I got to make some of those parts. Yeah. That, that little. You touch my good hand. You know that, yeah. that guy. Um, like I got to do that. Or in that TV show Friends, when uh, somebody had a baby yeah. and later on in the show, there was a little animatronic standing one. Oh, okay. And I got to make a bunch of parts for that. So I was taught by a machinist mm -hmm. how to make basic thing, how to like not kill myself with this and with the lathe. And so that's what I'll show you, how awesome. to not kill yourself. And that's the name of this segment, how to not kill yourself with a mill and a lathe. Yeah. All right, well, Frank's gonna show us uh, some of the pieces on the machine, show us a couple of operations, and I'm gonna give it a go myself. And hopefully you guys learn a little bit and are inspired to try out some of this wacky, awesome, uh, technology and technique. Yeah, well, this isn't really technology, this is like the 70s. Well, yeah. And you don't need to buy a $10,000 piece of equipment. No. You can get like the little Harbor Freight doodles. Mm -hmm. Half the time when I'm making stuff, I only use them that big. this much of the space. Yeah. Like I got the, the lathe, I only use like the first six inches. Right. Same thing with like, yeah, you don't need a big machine. No. But we're going to use a big machine. Yeah. All right, let's get to it. So this is my Bridgeport mill. Uh, this is a pretty standard design of a mill. Um, it kind of hasn't changed much since the 70s. So I'm have a little bit more things. Um, but you have your X and Y axis right here. In and out, back and forth. Um, you have your Z axis down here, which moves this bottom part called the knee. And then you have this, which I believe is the K axis, which is like the drill pressy part. Um, and then uh, this one is the vice. Uh, put a speed thing on the vice. Um, and there's an on-off switch over here. Um, when it's on, you can also change the speed over here. Um, you can only change the speed when it's running. Uh, and then this is a brake. Uh, and then if I want to change my collets, which I have a bunch of over here, there's a, a draw bar up here, which I have to loosen with the branch thingy. And that pulls out this. Um, this is like a regular drill chuck collet. Um, you only want to use this for drilling up and down because these collets aren't made to have side to side force. Um, when you're doing something side to side with the milling bit, you have to use the milling bit straight into a collet. So that's that part. Um, the first thing we'll do is we'll do some milling. So throw that in there and spin it until it gets into the little key. Tighten this up. There you go. Well, that's in there. So this guy doesn't quite make it, so I want to raise my Z-axis. Now, I do have power feeds coming for my knee and for the uh, left-right. Um, they're just not here yet. And then I won't have to sit here and crank like this. You can also get, like, a drill bit. You can just put on a drill and go, that'll do this. Um, I don't have that either, so I have to crank this. Uh, um, so I cut a block of wren shape. Uh, if you don't know what wren shape is, it's like a, a really dense urethane foam, really good for model making. Now since this has all been cut on a bandsaw, only one side is like the true flat side. So that's the one side we can kind of start with and know that that's straight. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is smooth out the other side. That way I have two parallel sides that we can clamp on. Um, in the vise, I just think it's called parallel. And what that does is, if you pretend it's the inside of the vise, that parallel will sit there, and then this will hold that flat end there. But this is too high. We want to give it a little bit more meat to grab, so I'm going to get a shorter parallel. Light's kind of bright, so I'm going to turn the turn the light off just for the video. There's a cool light, though. Um, so with this vise, I have a little stop right here. So if I was trying to measure something, this kind of gives me a, a, a stopping point. Um, but I don't really care about that right now. I'm just trying to like even out the part. So I'm just going to clamp it kind of wherever at the moment. So that's tight but not too tight. I don't want to like squish this because it's just a resin. A little bit more. For this, this part, there's a lock right here. So I'm going to make sure that's locked so that way it doesn't like start to sag or droop or anything. So that's, that's locked. And then I can just kind of slowly bring the knee up. So now I know that this surface is parallel with this surface. I can clamp that in there. And so this one we were using the face of the mill to even it out. Another way to cut, put it over here. In that side. So now we only have one side left that isn't straight. That one. Now there's probably a bunch of machinists that are yelling at the video right now that I'm cutting the wrong direction. When you're cutting like this on the side of a, of a bit, one, one way is called climb cutting, and the other way, I forget is what it is. Um, if I were cutting metal, it would make a lot more of a difference, but because this is like really soft uh, wren shape, you can kind of cut either direction, but certain, like when the, when the teeth, you want the, the teeth of the bit to like scrape away the metal, and if it's, if you're, if you're bringing it into the piece, it's taking it. But if you're cutting like this, and if you're pulling the piece into it, it like smushes chips in there and gives you a bad cut, so you have to cut the right direction. Um, again, soft material, it's not that huge of a deal if you're doing things like maybe plastics even, uh, it'll melt that back into it and give you a bad surface, but this is okay. So when you're making something, like you have to think about order of operations. Like it's, it's probably the same in, in just about anything you make, but the first thing to do would be to square up your material so that way no matter which way you need to clamp it or measure it, you're always measuring or clamping on something that's parallel. Um, the next thing that you want to do is you want to try and drill as many of your holes as you can while well, everything's still straight so that way you could find all your measurements easily. If you start milling shapes and curves and everything out of there, then it's hard to find that, that measurement. So you want to square it up, then drill your holes, and then make all of your angle mills or trim it up or do whatever you need to do. Um, so the next thing we'll just, we'll make up some holes. So let's see. We don't really have any like purpose in any of this stuff. So, I don't know, just drill some holes I guess. So we, gotta, we wanna go an inch in. We'll give us that line right there.
This is a metal you can use in stuff called die chem, and you could dye the surface and then scratch all of your lines into this. But not metal, plastic. So I'm going to just draw it with pencil. Um, you also, because we have this fancy digital readout, we don't need to draw lines on this thing because everything's square. We know where to, where to start. We just have to tell the machine where zero is. So maybe let's do that. So this little tool is called an edge finder. So I want to tell the machine where all my zeros are, where my X and Y zero is. So I'll throw this into the collar. And so you can see on the readout, I got my X's and Y's. So my X right here, we're going to do that measurement first. So what I want to do is I'm going to bring my little edge finder down under this lock that I put. And it's the way you, you tell where the edge is, is you just kind of start getting it close until it stops moving. Zero it out and then move it just a tiny little bit again. Keep zeroing it. And then eventually What it does is it'll shift to the side. And once it shifts to the side, then that means you've gone too far. So it's just a matter of like moving it thousandths of an inch. And there you go, we're at zero. So that's, that's my X. Now I gotta do the same thing for Y. Now that's set to the edge of the center finder, or the edge finder, but um, the edge finder is 0.2 inches wide. So we, not, we need to change all this another 0.1 inch uh, to, give it, to get it actually to zero. So this needs to come, so this says 0.1. One. Now my x is zero. Now this this corner right next to the little thing is zero. So when I want to drill holes and stuff, I can just use my digital readout instead of having to draw all over my thing. Or the the lines that we draw are just guides, and that gives us the precise measurements. So two things when you're drilling holes is you always want to like center it first with this nice little stubby bit. Um, that makes it so that it'll give you that precise little dot for your drill bit to hit so that the drill bit doesn't walk around. And then the other thing is for machining and stuff like that, I have short drill bits that I use. That also prevents them from like bending and kind of walking around. Um, it's just a preference. You could use like the regular size drill bits which are called jobber length. Um, these are called machine length. So I just like the short ones, a little more accurate. So get the Y at one inch. And the exit punch. There you go. Hey, look at that. I drilled a pilot hole. Now let's drill a quarter inch hole. That's easy. <coughs> If the machine bits aren't long enough to get through what you want to do, it's nice to start it out in a machine bit and then you can switch to the jobber length bit. That's just for keeping things a little bit, like the tolerance is just a little bit tighter. Um, I always would kind of joke and say that I, I machine things at bandsaw tolerance, um, but the, the more little things you can do to keep it uh, precise-ish, the better. So there really is no project that we're doing. I'm just kind of showing order of operations. So the first thing you would do is Drill, drill your holes, whatever measurements, now that you know how to find all your measurements on your piece. Um, and then if we were gonna make this like a, like a hinge or something like that, we wanna you know, carve out part of this so that it'll have like a clamp on it or something like that. Then you machine that next. Um, so we'll machine some out. Uh, again, having this, this stop here, we know where all of our 
our um, measurements are. So when we put in the mill bit, we know that this is a half inch bit. Our center is 0.25 from the edge of this. So if you just keep doing all the math, like once your once your zero is set, you can figure all this stuff out. It just takes a lot of like kind of planning and math. Now there's other indicators to find um, my Z and K uh, zero. I don't have those, um, so an easy way to do it is to just uh, turn it on, bring your Z up until it just barely kisses it. Barely, barely, barely scratch the surface. Um, and then I'll just back it off like a couple thousand. Okay, so that's kind of zero. Close enough. Again, bandsaw tolerance. Good enough. Um, and then we can also do the math to figure out where I am on my uh, X and Y axis. But we're just kind of making stuff, so it doesn't matter. So if I want to plunge this now a quarter inch, it's an easy measurement to find. I usually wouldn't plunge uh, a quarter inch on like aluminum or steel or something like that, but because this is super soft, um, it's okay. Um, that's too deep to go machining left and right. Yeah, it's fine. Ooh, nice and slow. With wrench shape and stuff like that, it's real forgiving. Um, you can also there's also machinist waxes that you can use. So if you haven't done a lot of this machining before, you go destroying bits. Um, you can practice on cheaper materials. Not cheaper materials, softer materials. There, now we've taken a quarter inch out of that. That's it. It's just, I don't know. That's it. That's how to use the machine. That's how to take cuts. That's how to drill holes. That's how to square up pieces. That's how to set your DRO. That's how to find your zeros. That's how to... That's basically all I learned. And from there, if you watch a bunch of other machinist YouTube channels and kind of pay attention, read some books. There's a bunch of books on Amazon you can get. Um, you can figure out all the more technical things. There's stuff like speed and feed, which is how fast you need to go and how quick you can travel um, with a bit, with depending on what kind of coatings on the bit, what kind of metal you're using, like, the, like there's a bazillion different factors that go into doing like more advanced machining, but for like soft stuff like wren shape, um, or even aluminum, it's really not that hard. Uh, just gotta read up and be safe. Wear your safety glasses. Be safe. Be safe. Your turn, Bill. My turn. All done. All done. We made a thing. We made things. I, mine doesn't look exactly like Frank's, but I was. I did this on purpose. Yeah. So you know was, the difference? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, for when we sell these on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was super cool. Uh, lining it up, facing all the pieces there, um, and just being able to know that if I move it over and down, this hole is going to be exactly where I need it to be. Then I made this cut with the same thing. I just. Switched it over until the readout was like, that's one inch. And then it, whoop, and it yep. just, just something super cool about having that fine control over where all the things go. Yeah. And again, if you want to learn like more of the technical and, and like 
really important things about using these. There's lots of books and videos. Yeah. Yeah. And lots of machining YouTube videos yep. too. Lots yeah. of them. That's whenever I don't know how to do a specific you know, task, Yeah. that's where I go and, oh, I need to make this kind of an angle or how do I true up the head? It's called tramming the head. Tramming. Yeah, yeah there's all kinds of stuff. Um, it's all on the internet. Yeah, it is. Well, cool. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this little uh, adventure into machining. Next time you come up here, yeah. we'll have to play with the lathe. We'll do the lathe next time. Yeah, we'll be back here at some point. And uh, maybe by then I'll have my own machine mill. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, maybe I'll show you guys a little more. I'll tell you what, if you guys want to see more machining stuff, uh, let me know. And I'll look into getting one of these guys in my house. Thanks for helping me out, Frank. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming out. by. Yeah. And we'll see all you guys next week. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any of our new weekly prop and costume tutorial videos. For more goodies, head over to our website where you'll find blueprints, tutorial books, articles, and more. We also have a second channel for our Q&A show and extra behind the scenes videos. Thanks again and happy crafting.